Okay, Newbert, I, I know you're mad at me right now, but I did not steal the last cookie from the cookie jar last night, okay? You have to believe me on this, bro. Wait, what are you saying? <gasps> yeah, okay, so we're coming to a general consensus. Why don't I just open this gate so that you can come out and then we can shake hands like adults? How does that sound? Does that sound fair to you? Okay, so I'm about to open the door, so I'm going to open the jail cell. Uh, I'm just going to be doing this, and then once you come out, let's just be civil about this, okay? So I'm just going to open the door, uh, just like so, and... Oh! Oh, Newbert, 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 Newbert. Once you're fixated on something, you just can't back out of it, can't you? Oh my goodness. Today's video is going to be about proximity prompts, which are basically these interactive pop-ups that you see inside of the game that you've probably seen in many other Roblox games in the past, where you press a certain key or a certain button to interact with whatever it is we're trying to interact with in the game, and you can also call this uh, the press E to interact functionality that Roblox has provided to us, in which I'm going to be teaching you how to implement inside of this video. So. With that being said, let's now go ahead and go straight into implementing. Now that we understand it, let's implement proximity prompts inside of Roblox Studio. So there's a couple of things we need to know about proximity prompts before we're able to like see them inside of our game. Uh, but the first thing we're going to do is insert a part so that we can attach our proximity prompt to that part. Because we can't just have a proximity prompt on its own, it needs to be attached to a part or I believe most 3D objects that are contained within the game, but we're just gonna be inserting a part. So I'm gonna go to model and I'm gonna click on part. Now with this part, I'm just gonna scale this up just like so. And what I'm also going to do is rename this part to proximity part, just like this. And then I'm gonna hit the plus sign next to the proximity part. And then I'm gonna insert a proximity prompt, which should look like this. So now that we have our proximity prompt, there's a few properties that we need to understand here when we're looking at this proximity prompt once we interact with it. Now, if I were to just go into the game and hit test, then we're able to walk up to the part and we can see our basic proximity prompt over here. So by default, it uses the E key and there is no object text, but there is an action text that says interact here. So if I press E, then it does interact with it, but it doesn't do anything right now. We need to add functionality to it. But before we do that, I'm going to hit stop and I'm going to show you uh, some things we can do to change this proximity prompt. So the first thing to consider is two things. First is the keyboard key code, and then the second one is the gamepad key code. So uh, if you're playing on PC, then we need to consider the keyboard key code that uh, you should press in order to activate this proximity prompt, which by default, it's E. So if we select this, then we can select uh, a bunch of different keys that we can use rather than E, but just by default, we're gonna set it to E. And then the second thing is the gamepad key code. So if you're playing on Xbox or PS4, then this is what is going to be replaced for the gamepad key code instead. Next thing is the object text and the action text. Both of these are two different things, and I'm gonna help you understand the difference between these two. So object text is basically the part or object that the proximity prompt is currently in that we're trying to interact with. So you can think of object text as what is it that we're interacting with? And then we have action text here, which is basically the action that we're gonna be taking with this object that we're looking at right here, which is this proximity prompt. So it can either be like, what action are we going to take? Or it could also just be, what do you want the player to do once you activate this part? So for the object text, what I'm gonna do is just call this proximity part. And then for the action text, we could just say click just like this, just to make it something different. And then if we go to test and then hit play, then what we should see is if we walk up to it, then it's going to first say the object text, which is going to be the proximity part. And then what's in white, this is going to be the action text right here. And then on the left side, it's going to show our key that we have to press in order to interact with it, which is E. So now we've customized our proximity prompt just a little bit, but if we try to interact with it, it's still not going to work because this is something we need to script ourselves. So that is basically some key aspects to proximity prompts that I wanted to show you. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to our proximity part, I'm gonna click on the plus sign and I'm gonna insert a script. So within the script, what I'm gonna do is first locate our proximity prompt by saying local proximity prompt equals script.parent.proximity prompt just like this. And there's two events for proximity prompts that we can use. The first one is going to be called proximity prompt dot triggered uh, colon connect 
function, open and close parentheses, enter. Now, what this uh, event does is it basically activates when we interact with the proximity prompt by pressing E. So there's one argument that gets passed here, which is the player who triggers this proximity prompt. So I'm just gonna pass this in as a player. And what we can do just for a simple example is print the player's name just like so whenever we interact with the proximity prompt. So if we go into the game and hit play and we walk up to the proximity prompt and press E on it, then what we should see in the output is the name of the player who interacted with it, which in this case is me, Brawl Battle. Now, there's something else we can do with this proximity prompt, and that is adding a hold duration to it. Uh, so that we don't just press the key and then it'll automatically trigger. So that's with the use of hold duration down here, which is in seconds. So if I put this for, let's say, two seconds, then it's going to add a hold duration before it actually triggers the proximity prompt. So now if we go into the game and try this out for ourselves, so we can't press it anymore, but instead we have to hold it for two seconds before it triggers it once down here by printing out Brawl Battle. So that is a little something I wanted to add there just for more functionality. Another thing we can do is add a hold down functionality to this proximity prompt, if that makes sense. Like you basically hold down the proximity prompt, and then after a certain period of time, when you let go, then it's basically going to stop executing the proximity prompt. And we're gonna be doing this by using another event called triggered ended. So if I drop two lines down here and say proximity prompt dot triggered ended just like this colon connect function open and close parentheses and then we're going to pass in the player once again and then we're going to hit enter so uh what we can do is just say player has let go of the proximity prompt just like this and if we go inside of the game and then hit play then what we should see happening is if we activate this proximity prompt by holding E for two seconds, then it's going to print out my name. I still have the E key uh, held down on the keyboard, but once I let go, then it's going to say player has let go of the proximity prompt, and now we're able to um, use this proximity prompt again. So that is basically how we hold down, quote unquote, a proximity prompt, and you might find this to be useful if you ever wanted to try and do this inside of your own game. If you're wondering if we can do this local sided, Yes, we can. And it's pretty easy, actually. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to our script and we're just going to quickly disable this. I'm going to go to uh, starter player and I'm going to insert a local script inside of starter player scripts just like this. It doesn't have to specifically be here, but just as, as an example, this is where I'm going to put the local script. And the first thing I'm going to do is locate the proximity part. So I'm going to say local proximity part equals game dot workspace colon wait for child proximity part. And then I'm going to locate the proximity prompt by saying local proximity prompt equals proximity part colon wait for child proximity prompt just like that and then I'm gonna say proximity prompt dot triggered colon connect function open close parentheses and then we're gonna pass in the player although you could also just refer to the local player since this is a local script now but we're just gonna pass in the player argument here just like so and just as a little example what we're gonna do is I'm going to add a remote event inside of replicated storage send this over to the server so that the player who triggered this uh, proximity prompt will get their health be reduced by 10 just to like show you a practical example so what I'm gonna do is hit the plus sign I'm gonna insert a remote event just like this and I'm going to say take damage just like that and I'm gonna locate this inside of replicated storage so I'm going to say local uh, take damage equals game dot replicated storage colon wait for child take damage just like this and then I'm gonna say take damage fire server just like that and now I'm gonna insert a script inside of the server script service I'm going to go back to the local script and just copy our take damage reference and paste it in here and then I'm gonna say take damage dot on server event connect function open close parentheses player just like this and then I'm going to basically just say player dot character dot humanoid dot health minus equals 10 just like this just as a very simple example basically what this is going to do is every time we activate the proximity prompt on the local side then it's basically going to get rid of 10 HP from our character every single time we interact with it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to get rid of the whole duration. So I'm gonna make this zero and I'm gonna go and hit play. So once we interact with this proximity prompt by hitting it once, and if I go to the client, or sorry, the server, then it's going to say that my character's health was reduced by 10. So if I press it twice, 
and I go to the server, then it's going to keep reducing it by 10 every single time. So I'm just gonna like spam this. And then as you can see, I'm like basically almost dead just by doing this. And if I keep going, then I'm basically dead. So that's like a little functionality for local sided scripting for proximity prompts if you ever found this to be useful, not just for this health system, but for like basically anything. You could also do this in the server side as well. So don't feel like it's restricted to just local side or server side. It just depends on your preference, but there are some instances where it will be useful to do it on the client side. Okay, so I've seen this problem happen a lot with proximity prompts where it just doesn't show up when you try interacting with it within the game. And one of the most famous examples is if we, let's say, had a part that was too wide like this, and we had the proximity prompts that was still contained within this part. So if I were to go into the game and hit play and we walk up to it and try to interact with it, then it's not going to show up because it's located in the center of the part that we're trying to interact with rather than being anywhere inside of this part right here. And so this is a common problem that people have when it comes to using proximity prompts in their game. There actually is a solution to this by being able to select which area of a part that you can have this proximity prompt in for more accurate interaction with the part that you're trying to interact with. And that is with the use of attachments, which I actually haven't talked about on my channel yet, but I'm going to be showing you the basics of it in this video so that you can use it for your proximity prompts. So I'm just going to hit stop right here. An attachment is just simply a point that is contained within a part. So here's what an attachment looks like. If we were to go to the proximity prompts and we hit the plus sign and we inserted a attachment, it's going to look like this. So once we insert this attachment and select it, then we can see this little green dot right here with two axes going on the X direction and one going on the Y direction. Now, this is basically where we're going to put our proximity prompt so that we can have a more accurate location for where we want the player to interact with this proximity prompt. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to home and I'm going to select the move tool and then I'm going to move the attachment this way so that we can have it over here. And let's say this was a door, then I would probably have it somewhere that's over, uh, let's say here. This is basically where we're going to have our proximity prompt. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take our proximity prompt in the Explorer and I'm gonna drag it inside of the attachment just like this. And what I'm now going to do is re-enable our script here that's inside the proximity prompt. And I'm going to relocate our proximity prompt. So it's going to be script.parent.attachment, just like this. And then it's going to be the proximity prompt, just like so. So now if we go uh, hit test and hit play, then what we should see inside of the part that the proximity prompt is now over here because it is contained in the attachment where we specified in this part. So this is very useful if you want to specify a specific location of where you want to use this proximity prompt rather than just have it be in the center of the part that it's attached to by default. So if we now interact with this, then it's going to print out my name at the bottom. When I let go of E, then it's gonna say player has let go of the proximity prompt. And that is basically how we use attachments to solve this problem that a lot of developers do face with proximity prompts. So Roblox has another property for us to use with proximity prompts, and that is called exclusivity, which basically tells us like how many proximity prompts do we want to show on screen if we're close by to them? Or if we want to just show one proximity prompt one at a time, just so that we don't have a bunch of proximity prompts shown at the same time within the same distance. That's what exclusivity does for us. And I'm gonna show you the difference between all three settings here, which the first one by default is called one per button. But just to make things simple, I'm actually going to take the attachment and what I'm gonna do is I'm going to duplicate it and then move it this way like this. And I'm also gonna duplicate it one more time and then move it upward just like this. So now we have three attachments with three proximity prompts in them. So I'm just gonna select all of them and I'm gonna click on the drop down. I'm gonna first show you always show, which I think is the most self-explanatory one. So if we hit play, then what we should see is basically all of the proximity prompts showing at the exact same time, as long as I'm within the range for this proximity prompt, which we can specify with the max activation distance, which is 10 studs. So all of them show at the exact same time, 
but there's a way we can change the exclusivity of these proximity prompts. So if, if we hit stop, then I'm going to show you the other ones. So the next one is called one globally, which basically only shows one proximity prompt at a time. If we were to go inside of here, then it's basically only going to show one proximity prompt and it's not going to show all three of them at the same time. So that's what one globally means. But now the last one, this one's going to be a little tricky. This one is called one per button, which basically means that it's going to exclusively show a proximity prompt if two proximity prompts or more have the same exact key that's contained within it. So what I'm talking about is for all of these, all of them use the E key to activate it. But if I had this third attachment, let's say this one right here, if we change the keyboard key code to something different, like let's say R, and if we now go into the game and hit play, then what we should see is basically a proximity prompt here that says we can press E, but also it shows the R key that we can press as well, but it's not showing both of the E proximity prompts because we set it to be one per button. I hope like this has made sense to you where it's like, if we have one per button, then it's only going to show proximity prompts of having one proximity prompt per button, one of them being R and one of them being E. But if this was, let's say one globally, then it doesn't matter what key it is because it's still going to show one proximity prompt no matter what. So that's basically how exclusivity works works and I hope that you found this part to be useful. So for this last part of the video, I want to quickly address the difference between a proximity prompt and a click detector. Now, a click detector is basically Roblox's old way of being able to interact with objects inside of the game. So if I were to show you what this looks like, let's insert a click detector inside of the proximity prompt and let's hit play. So if I were to hit play, then what we should see is this icon change inside of our mouse where it shows that we are able to click on this part. Now, this is the only functionality that this click detector does. It allows us to click this object that's contained within the game, and that's basically all this does. So it's pretty simple and it's pretty primitive compared to what we have now with proximity prompts. So you can use click detectors in your game if you want, but proximity prompts kind of supersede the functionality of click detectors, and you don't need click detectors anymore. But there can be some use cases of when you would decide to use click detectors over proximity prompts. So that is kind of a little explanation that I can give with click detectors. Now, if you want to make this click detector functional, I can quickly add a script and I'm going to uh, say script.parent. And there's only one event that's useful, which is dot mouse click colon connect function, open and close parentheses. And then we pass in the player who clicked on it, just like we did with proximity prompts. And then we can print out player clicked on the part. And then if we were to go into the game and hit play, then what we should see is if we click on the part, then it's going to say player clicked on the part, and that is pretty self-explanatory. One last thing is the max activation distance, kind of like proximity prompts, where it's like, how far away does it take for us to actually click on this part or interact with it and things like that. And so that is basically the difference between proximity prompts and click detectors, and it's kind of a matter of preference of which one you decide to use for your Roblox game. So that is basically gonna be it for this episode, and I hope you enjoyed this tutorial on proximity prompts. So if you want to learn more about interacting with parts in the game using GUIs, then I encourage you to watch my billboard GUI tutorial that I will have for you right here on screen. But with that being said, that's basically going to be it for this episode. I hope you enjoyed it and I will see you in the next one. Take care.